Hello, my name is Rohan Paul and very welcome to my computer vision and deep learning YouTube channel. Let's get started. So in this video, I will talk about level smoothing in deep learning. Level smoothing in a nutshell is a way to make our model more robust so that it generalizes well. And by doing that, it avoids a problem of overconfidence. And here, what you see right now on the screen is a mathematical representation to convert a Y vector, a Y hot vector to its level smooth version. So on the right hand side, I, I multiply Y hot by one minus alpha plus alpha by K here. K is a number of level classes and alpha is a hyperparameter that determines a uh, amount of smoothing. So obviously from this expression we can see if alpha equal to zero then we obtain the original one hot encoded y hot and if alpha equal to one we get the uniform distribution. Now the problem of overconfidence that label smoothing tries to solve is that an overconfident model is not calibrated and its predicted probabilities are consistently higher than the accuracy. For example, it may predict 0.9 for inputs where the accuracy is only 0.6. And also note that uh, models with small test errors as well can still be overconfident. Now let's consider the problem of overconfidence with an actual example here. So I have, uh, just for example, I have five images, let's say, with the label, and then a human labels them uh, with uh, with one hot encoded vector like this, is dog, is cat, is horse, is bear, is crew, and one represent that uh, that's a true level, and zero, of course, represent false. And then let's say we train a model, classification model, which uh, trains and predicts some logits value on these images. Uh, and these are those logits values. Uh, remember, this is logits. So 4.7 minus 2.5 uh, for this image one and for this various uh, is dog, is cat, etc. Uh, similarly, for image two, I have few numbers. And that's how a typical image classifier a deep learning setup will go that a list of images and labels make the model predict something then calculate the cross entropy loss and back propagate to update the model's parameters and we keep doing this until the model learns to assign the correct levels to the corresponding images now what is the problem with this the problem is that the way the prediction are uh, you can see here the logit value for the cross entropy loss to really be at a minimum each logit corresponding to the correct class needs to be significantly higher than the rest. That is, for example, for row one on the on the image here at the right bottom corner, uh, the image one uh, the logit is 4.7 for is dog corresponding to is dog, and that's a that's a true level uh, for this prediction. So this 4.7 is significantly higher than all the rest of the numbers, and this behavior of uh, uh, of the true level logit value need to be uh, significantly higher than the rest of the rest of the values who are mathematically proven uh, by a paper written by uh, Mr. Lei Mayo where he explains that why minimizing cross entropy loss is equivalent to do maximum likelihood estimation. And this problem can cause two further problems. First, it may result in overfitting if the model learns to assign full probability to the ground truth level for each training example, it is not guaranteed to generalize. And second, it encourages the differences between the largest logit and all other logits to be large, and hence the model will become less adaptable. In other words, our model could become overconfident of its predictions because to really minimize the loss, our model needs to be very, very sure of everything that it predicts. That's, and that is bad because it is then harder for the model to generalize and easier for it to overfit to the training data. Now, if I apply level smoothing to this last um, uh, table here containing all the logits, I will get something like this. And here you can see the differences between the numbers, between the true value prediction number and the rest is uh, significantly smaller. So intuitively, level smoothing restrains the logit value for the correct class to be closer to the logit values for other classes. And here is the mathematical expression for cross-entropy loss with level smoothing. 
So uh, label smoothing changes a target vector by a small amount epsilon, the this this uh, this epsilon here. So uh, we are pretty much uh, instead of asking our model to predict one for the right class, we ask it to predict one minus epsilon for the correct class and epsilon for all the others. So the cross entropy loss function with label smoothing is transformed into this expression. And in this, uh, the CE uh, denotes a standard cross entropy loss, for example, minus log PX. And epsilon is this epsilon that we just talked about. It's a small positive, a positive number. And I, I is a correct class here. That is this I and N is a number of classes. Now let's quickly uh, see an uh, implemented version of these in fast AI source code. So now I'm looking at these uh, GitHub repository of fast AI, fast AI 2 indeed, and I'm in the layers.py uh, pi, uh, file line number 346. I will give the, the link of this in the description of this video. So the, this class label smoothing cross entropy that has been defined here and within that this forward function will have my uh, cross entropy uh, smoothening this formula implemented. So quickly look, take a look that C is a uh, number of classes output dot size uh, and then taking minus one and then within it the main thing is that my loss is defined uh, as a log uh, f dot log softmax and take a note of this final line the return value this is the formula uh, that is this is implementing this formula. So I have uh, these uh, this part of the formula that is cej by n n is a number of classes multiplied by epsilon that is being defined here that is loss multiplied by self dot epsilon divided by c uh, c is a number of classes and then first part of this formula that is one minus epsilon cei that has been defined here that is one minus self dot eps multiplied by f dot null loss uh, sorry nll loss and to that NLL loss, I pass the required uh, arguments, my log prediction and target dot long values. And uh, normally level smoothing is used when the loss function is cross entropy and the model applies the soft max function to the penultimate layers logit vector Z to compute its output probability sp. So, uh, a couple of more points to remember that um, when do you use uh, label smoothing whenever a classification a classification neural network suffers from overfitting and or overconfidence we can try label smoothing and uh, how do we choose the value of these uh, uh, value of the alpha that we talked about initially uh, which is the uh, which is a hyperparameter so for choosing this hyperparameter, the same principle applies that it's a hyperparameter. So there is no perfect value. You have to just tune it, experiment it to find your best uh, value for it. And can we use distribution other than uniform distribution in the label smoothing? Uh, technically, yes, we can. Uh, and there are some theoretical groundwork uh, which has been developed for arbitrary distribution to be applied to, applied to label smoothing. And uh, label smoothing normally is... Uh, not applied outside of deep learning because softmax is mostly used within deep learning. And uh, we saw the code in PyTorch, but uh, sorry, we saw the code in uh, FastAI, uh, that is this code, but in PyTorch cross entropy, there's just a single thing you have to do. So I'm looking at the cross entropy loss uh, official documentation of PyTorch. And this takes a parameter called level smoothing here and it takes a float value uh, between 0, 0.0 and 1 specifies the amount of smoothing when computing the loss and this is all you have to do while applying your pytorch nn dot cross entropy loss that just put a number to this level smoothing uh, argument in the next video i will try to implement a cross entropy loss with level smoothing in pytorch uh, from scratch and that pretty much wraps up this video and over the coming days I will do many such videos on common techniques and tips of PyTorch while doing deep learning projects. So do subscribe and smash the like button. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.